In this video, we're gonna cover the fine print of dry ice cleaning. We're gonna detail what all of that is. And right now it is vastly more popular in the automotive detailing industry. And while it is relegated mostly to professional use at this point, in my approximation, you're gonna see this scaled out to commercial cleaning companies, residential cleaning, the applications and possibilities are huge because really you're replacing a lot of chemical, a lot of solvent, a lot of enzyme cleaning because dry ice can have a greater effect at a microscopic level without all the chemicals and without water on top of it. So let's get into it. I'm gonna head over to Chicago Auto Pros and talk to some industry experts on what it's like to use this. I'm back at Chicago Auto Pros, this time for something a bit different. This might not be new to everyone, but it is new to most people. And it's a new cleaning technique that is kind of a huge buzz right now because of the before and after effects. People love like that stuff you see in infomercials where it's just one scrub and everything looks yep, brand new. One and done. Yep. So dry ice cleaning, tell me a little bit about it. So I'm Eric Joseph from Car Supplies Warehouse. Again, we're housed out of Chicago Auto Pros and we're super excited to bring what we are calling affordable dry ice cleaning technology to the US and to the masses. So we'll get all into how it works, why use it, the benefits, the pros, the cons, all that. We actually do have the owner of Dry Ice Energy, Gernot, here with us. Okay. So we have the master himself. All right. So anything that I can't answer, he's gonna be able to. I think we're gonna have a great time. All right, well, so we're gonna dive into it right now. So this is my S2000. You've probably seen it in other videos. If you haven't, uh, Chicago Auto Pros has done a full paint correction. Like literally, it's been repainted in the front. I've had the fenders redone to accommodate wider wheels and tires because most of the time, all I do is track this car now. So one of the negative parts about it, even though it's never seen snow or salt, is when you track a car or there's a lot of brake dust, you can see in this area here, just how much buildup there is. Uh, and corrosion and all that type of stuff. So this is gonna be the targeted area to kind of show you the before and after of this treatment, but we're gonna get into the technical details of how you use the machine. Really, there's a lot of science behind this, and I think it's gonna surprise you how much goes into this. So let's get into the technical stuff. We have all the equipment here, but first we need to introduce the guy that has all of the knowledge. <laughs> so introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, I'm Gernot, the general manager of Dry Ice Energy, and I'm happy to be here today. Um, I flew in from, from Germany the other night uh, just to be here to do this video with you and bring you some insights on the dry ice cleaning with our uh, very compact and small and handy machines we have here. So how did you get into this? Like, was this always like your passion car stuff or? Well, actually the company was founded uh, with, with a close friend of mine and once he told me about it, it kind of zipped me because I thought, well, this is a great cleaning technology because it's environmentally friendly, it can, you can basically use it everywhere. So I kind of started the, th the thought about it. I quit my former job, which was in consulting, and I said, well, I want to touch something, I want to do something, and I loved the, the idea from it from the beginning. And now I'm from, since 2015, I'm just promoting and I'm working on the product, improving it. We started out with one uh, model we had. Now we have uh, four different models working on the fifth one at the moment. So we are developing it and it's all manufactured in Germany. And now we're here to show you guys and hopefully you're going to like it. <laughs> so this is not something that just sp spun up overnight. You've been working on this, yes. developing and improving it over the course, yeah. better half of like seven years now. That's correct. There was a, there's a lot of engineering in it, you know, a lot of thoughts, a lot of things, you know, because dry ice actually is a very tough medium to work with because it's minus 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And when you have it here, it just sucks humidity from, from, the, from the surrounding and it tends to stick. And what we managed to do with our machines is and we managed to move the ice smoothly through the machine, which is, sounds easy, but the, yeah, the, the devil is in the detail, actually. Yeah, like most things that <laughs> are detail-oriented. So yeah. walk me through, we got over the air compressor, walk me through the machines and like what you need to get this all set up. Basically, since I said you don't have any power or electricity to it, what you need is uh, your air compressor, you need an air hose. We see one here on the ground. We're going to see it later in the video also. You need the machine, uh, you need dry ice, so you need to find a dry ice supplier to get it regularly delivered or you're going to go somewhere to pick it up. But, uh, and um, that's basically it. 
Okay. So, in terms of dry ice, is there a specific type of dry ice that you need, or can you just get it in block form? Like, how is it? That's a good question. Um, our machines run with rice pellets, okay. so which is basically the standard all over the world. Okay. They, they, we call them three millimeter rice pellets. You can use smaller ones also. And I also used 16 millimeter big pellets also to work with the machine. It worked quite okay, but I would recommend to get the rice pellets. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. So the difference between this machine and the green and whitish machine here, we have the Champ Turbo and the Vario here, is that you can, they are stronger. You can run them with a higher CFI level okay. and uh, you can also add abrasive material to those. So once, because everybody when they talk, oh, dry ice, I want to remove rust, for example, or I want to, I want to remove paint or anything like that. Uh, to be honest, just with dry ice, it's going to be a very hard job. Uh, it won't work, basically. <laughs> okay. But so what we, we, what we managed to do is you can just mix the dry ice with some abrasive material. We're going to probably try it out later also. And then you can actually remove paint and you can actually remove uh, rust. So, but that's only possible with the green and white models Makes because they are, they are the more they are a little bit built stronger, last longer. That doesn't mean that that is a bad quality machine, but you know, that's just entry level for a normal workshop. I would say it's very sufficient if you just do car cleaning. If you go and, and spot repair or some smart detailing, smart repair stuff, I would recommend the other ones. They turn into essentially dry ice slash sandblasters at kind that of point. Like that, okay. yeah. But yeah, but always in combination with dry ice because just sand is just too aggressive for the machine. Sure, makes sense. <laughs> okay. And then we have some extras. Some, of course, everybody, uh, the machine come with a standard nozzle, so a round nozzle, but sometimes you want to want to clean a bigger area, stuff like that. So we, we developed uh, quite a few different nozzles. For example, this one is our flat nozzle, extra large. So you can imagine this is the size that the dry ice comes out. So for interior cleaning, for example, or bigger areas that just gives you more efficiency. In terms of interior, you're talking about seats, fabrics, or are you talking about like any type of interior surface? I would say basically about any type. With okay. leather, you should be careful. Okay. But um, I mean, the standard leather, you can go over it really quickly, but the more expensive the leather is, I would be careful because leather is a natural product. It has a lot of oil in it. Yeah. So when you cool it down really quickly, it loses a lot of this oil. So, and you can also, um, when you hit it, you can also take off some of the color, for example. Makes so sense. just be careful. Okay. That brings me to the other aspect, of course, safety. So you should wear gloves because the uh, dry ice is minus 100 degrees. So okay. it's very freezing. It actually burns your, uh, your, your skin. Even though it's cold, they okay. still say it's burning. Minus 100 <laughs> degrees Celsius or no, Fahrenheit? No, Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Okay. Okay. So, so about 80 Celsius and 110 Fahrenheit. Yeah. So obviously you can adjust pressure from the uh, compressor and then you can adjust settings on here with yeah, well, with, with the standard machine we have here, basically what you can just here, we, we deliver like this pressure reducer and filter system. So this one also takes out some, if you don't have an air dryer, for example, this also takes out some of the water that is in the compressed air. Okay. Because you can imagine if you combine water and minus 100 degrees, it just freezes and makes, it, turns the, ice, it yeah. stucks the machine. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you, you, gotta have, you want the most dry air you can get. So this makes helps sense. you a little bit and you can, uh, you can adjust the pressure here. Um, but with the standard machine, that's basically it. So you move, you work with distance and pressure. Okay. And when we go to the Vario, for example, here we call it Vario because it's the most flexible machine we have. Okay. So you can adjust actually the pressure right in the machine. And on the back of the machine, we have a uh, already put in the hose. So we have a switch here, and this actually uh, changes the ice flow rate. So when you have a very sensitive, delicate area, you just take the ice flow rate down to one. Okay. And then there's only a little bit ice coming out, so it's not so aggressive. Okay. Or if you do undercarriage work and you need a lot of power, you can adjust it here to five, for example. Makes sense. So, so can you just define delicate? Like where would you set, put a one? Well, sometimes on the headliner, for example, okay. when you clean that, sometimes, you know, the, the glue is not so, so, so strong. So you want to try it out a little bit, see how the material reacts to go on this, for example. But also when you, when it comes to electronics, when you clean computer systems or computer plate, so the, the chips are, so you can actually clean those because okay. there's no water involved. So you can clean all kinds of electronics, which, which gives you an, ex, uh, an advantage also for electric cars and stuff like that. You know, it's a huge thing. How, how would you clean an electric engine, you know? Yeah, that's With true. a pressure washer? Right, yeah, makes right. sense. So that's, that's the huge advantage of dry ice there because there's no water. 
So also I can use, take for example a business card and spray it just to take off the color of the business card. So you won't break it, but the color will be off. So that's okay. it's very delicate. And on the other hand, I put it on full speed and then and I have a hole in there just in a second. So. so it really, it sounds like regardless of the machine, a lot of this is technique and understanding how to use the tool without destroying your car or whatever you decide you're going to clean with. That's well, it's, I always tend to say it's, it's a tool, you know, and uh, a tool is not something to play with. <laughs> so you need to take care, you, do it, you need to do it correctly, take care, test the material, you know, but basically it's hard actually to destroy something with it because okay. you can go on plastics, you can go on, even on screens, you know, when you have your sat nav or your navigation system, want to clean the screen, no problem. When you go to the dashboard, no problem. You can do basically everything in the interior. Also with the engines, you can hit everything basically. But you know, um, with some materials, for example, uh, some some sponges or something you have to in the engine that are open, uh, just just be careful with those because okay. you can rip them off, for example. Right. Because Makes it's, sense. it's a tool at the end of the day, you know. So in terms of the, you have the wand or the gun that comes out of here. Yeah. Um, the no, regardless, it's always negative 100 Fahrenheit. That the temperature that's coming out of here. Yeah. So Basically. one of the questions was just from like a pure practical perspective, if you're putting this on a material that is older and you have a, a like a piece of rubber or a, a bushing yeah. or something that you're hitting it at a room temperature and you're blasting it with negative 100 degrees, how do you prevent cracking or it's, destroying the material? Well, so far, even with windshields or anything, we never had a problem with them, yeah. with cracking it because always remember how to use the tool. You don't ha have the gun and hit the material for like 10 minutes. You just go over it a little bit, like like a paint gun or something okay. like this, so the, the material doesn't cool down so quickly. Okay. May, maybe it goes down to maybe 32 Fahrenheit or something okay. like that, but that's a normal temperature also in the winter. So, of course, it, go, it cools down real quickly, but it doesn't harm it at all. Even rubbers, it's, it, it, it's the other way around. So a little pellet like this will expand by, by this factor of 700. Okay. So the expansion kind of rips the dirt off the surface. That's one thing. The second thing is the kinetic energy of the pellets because you shoot it with a pneumatic gun on the surface, so it hits the surface. So you have some kinetic energy to it. You have the freezing aspect also to it because it's very cold, like I said, in minus 100 degrees Celsius. Oh no, sorry, Fahrenheit. So it freezes the dirt kind of. It can sort of get dry. The, all the liquid parts of the dirt, the oil, they get off. So it gets like a like a sole, sole of a desert, for example. Okay. When you think of this, it gets crinkles and edges, and then the other pellets go in there and they expand. So that's why they rip off the dirt. So it's quite cool. It has three aspects to it. Now, as I went along with this process, I donated my S2000 so they could do some training on it. And as you can see some of the before and after, this is why this technology is so amazing because you can see immediate effects. You can see the immediate results of doing it right. Now, in the case of this car, it was a great example of showing how to strip off surface rust, a lot of dirt and plastic that normally you would have to scrub with a brush, use buckets of waters and cleaning and then dressing to, to make it look brand new. Whereas this, you could essentially make certain pieces look brand new with minimal effort, including things like that race car we saw where they scrubbed an Alcantara wheel that was just disgusting from oil. And just literally using this with no other cleaning agents, the wheel was almost returned to new condition, or at least that Alcantara. So that's the benefit. Now, they showed just how powerful you can make this by stripping off the undercoating on the S2000. And at first I was like, oh my God, what, what are you doing? Why would you do that? And, and the point is like some of this undercoating even gets disgusting after a while from the rocks, the brake dust. So they were literally able to strip all of that off with dry ice and then reapply the undercoating afterwards so it looked brand new when it was done. So there's applications for this if you're a car collector or someone that just wants to, to take an older car and make some of the parts look new again without having to refurbish everything and without having to get down to, to crazy stuff in terms of grinding wheels and all of that. You can do a lot with basically no abrasion to get the car looking new. So that, that's what's cool about some of this. So 
Now I want to show you some examples of cleaning with the dry ice machine. We already put some dry ice in there, so it's ready to go. We brought here some examples of maybe that also show us some limitations or what it can do and cannot do. For example, many people ask me when I have old aluminum parts in the engine, for example, will they look like new? And I say, no, actually not, because the aluminum over time changes. You know, it gets some oxidation, it gets some dirt on it, so it, the color changes after time. What we can do, we can clean it technically, but we won't polish it, so it won't shine after it. So if you want to do that, you will have to sandblast it or put it, in, put it in some acid, actually, to clean it. But what we can do is actually we can clean it. Also, with these um, plastic parts, these covers, what we have here, so some dirt on there, and um, um, you will see that it will clean it quite nicely and maybe we can also see the effect of the grayish parts that will that will uh, turn out quite nice again and also here we have a shock observer on the on the other day on the other side to to show you just some examples before we go to the car and actually uh, do some work there in conclusion, if you've ever seen my videos, you know I care more about driving than sitting there and polishing a car, but as cars get more expensive, you know, the investment needs to be there to maintain them. Now, as I started to say at the beginning of this video, I really do feel this technology is going to grow outside of the car market. It has to. When you look at the practical applications in a home or an office or a commercial business, if you go in and clean a home and it's all nasty, all you have to do is take one of these in here. You can clean the crud out of a microwave that's been built up, an oven, a refrigerator, bathrooms. The, the application really is unlimited without the need for brushes, agitators, harsh chemicals, and even carpet. If you look at standard carpet cleaning, they're using enzymes, they're using steam, they're using chemicals. So if you have bad allergies or you're chemical sensitive, you can use dry ice cleaning and not even know it happened. And that's great for a car interior as well because I hate the smell of a lot of the stuff that detailers use, and I, that's one of the reasons why I don't like the stuff. So thinking about that, that's why there are huge advantages to using it. It's not a complete replacement for you know all the chemicals to clean a car. It's not gonna do that. Now, in terms of their, their, their claim that it, it can be more green because you're not using water, you're just using the dry ice and then the electricity to power the, uh, the compressor, there's some truth to it because a lot of the dry ice companies, they're reclaiming carbon dioxide as waste product from commercial applications or manufacturing. So it's reclaimed and then reused. So it was already gonna be blown off in the atmosphere. So, and you're not using that much anyway for most of these applications. So I can see that claim having some legitimacy, but that's not why you're using this. You're using it as like a detailing product. And you know, if you're detailing a car, it's, it, <laughs> I don't have to say anything more than that. So the, the negatives are, for one, you do need a larger air compressor. So if you're a mobile detailer, yeah, you're gonna have to cart that around in a truck with you or tow one behind you. So you're gonna need that in electricity. The other part is right now, the, the machines, the dry ice machines are costly you know anywhere from five thousand to ten thousand depending on the quality the brand so you know right now it's for professional use and you have to keep in mind the safety elements of it you're you're blasting you know uh, frozen carbon dioxide so you have to wear eye protection gloves even smocks to make sure you don't burn yourself if you're using glass media or sand in it as that sand blasting method that sand or glass media is all over the floor and going to get all over dusting so you got to make sure you don't have you know people don't fall and, you know, so it's just common sense stuff. And that's part of this, like he said, to, it's a tool and you have to understand how to use the tool. Otherwise you can hurt yourself, someone else, or even damage the product. Like if you're cleaning a car and you don't know what you're doing, you could take the paint off of it. Uh, so anyway, I think from seeing this in person, it is amazing. I can see why it's gonna get even more popular. And if you're somebody that is interested in doing this car, if you're a car collector, you should do this to all your cars because it saves you from having to replace certain parts because you can get them so clean without having to grind everything down. It's really cool. If you have questions, hit up Chicago Auto Pros. They'll answer anything you need. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next video.